To be or to be? Those are the questions. Let's learn about ser and estar right after this. Hola, soy Ricardo. Soy profesor de español. Soy originalmente de California. Ahora estoy en Virginia. Estoy grabando un video. La familia de mi mamá es mexicana. Mi familia mexicana es muy divertida. Siempre hay fiestas en la familia de mi mamá. Las fiestas normalmente son en la casa de mi tía Berta. Este sábado la fiesta es a las 2 de la tarde. La fiesta es el 26 de octubre. La casa de mi tía está delante de la casa de mi abuela. Ella es viejita. A veces ella no va a las fiestas. Está bien porque su casa está muy cerca. Podemos cruzar la calle para verla. La casa es pequeña, no es grande, pero es un ambiente acogedor. Ella siempre tiene comida para sus hijos, nietos y bisnietos. Ella es una mujer muy ocupada. ¿Y tú? ¿Cómo eres? ¿Eres una persona alegre? Yo soy una persona muy feliz. I have covered ser and estar previously in my other videos, but let's go over the rules real quickly before we dive deeper. First, estar is used to talk about location. Estoy en Virginia. Mi familia está en California. ¿Dónde estás tú? Estar is also used with the present progressive that's similar to the ing form in English. Estoy grabando un video. Estamos hablando con nuestros amigos. Estás escuchando la lección. Estar is also used to talk about a current state, whether emotional or physical. Estoy contento. Estoy triste. Estoy cansado. Those are the three main uses of estar. For ser, we use ser to talk about who someone is. Yo soy Ricardo. To talk about someone's profession. Soy profesor. To talk about what someone is usually like. Ella es bonita. So physical description, perhaps, or a mental state, if it's, if the person's always like that. Yo soy contento. We use ser to talk about the time, both when we're looking at the clock and stating what time it is. Es la una, son las dos. And we also use the time, sorry, we also use ser when we are saying at what time something is at. La fiesta es a las dos de la tarde. You said also to discuss relationships. Ella es mi abuela. Nosotros somos amigos. As a part of this recap, I want you to keep in mind that said usually has to do with essence. In fact, ser comes from that same Latin root, essence. 
sad is what something is usually like you can't take away its essence estar is related to the word state when we say estado like el estado de california el estado de texas el estado de nueva york well we are talking about states but just like in english we can have a state that is a part of this country or we can have a state that is mental or physical for some reason the words sound the same maybe they have a similar root so estar think about that as a state of a person a place or a thing it can change so those are the basics of ser versus estar and i have covered them again in a couple of videos but now let's look at some other uses of ser and estar sometimes we use the same adjective but ser or estar will give that adjective a different meaning let's look at a few of these estar aburrido to be bored ser aburrido to be boring if you say estoy aburrido that means you are bored you're not having fun if you say soy aburrido that means you bore others you are a boring person estar alegre feliz contento ser alegre feliz contento maybe you're usually not a happy-go-lucky type person maybe you just uh, even tempered uh, but you win the lottery and man are you happy estás contenta you are happy because of something that just happened eres una persona contenta that's a person that's always happy meaning that they are that happy-go-lucky person you never see them be a Debbie Downer you always see them just enjoying life estar bueno ser bueno if you eat a tasty meal and you want to show how much you enjoy it well then you say está bueno está delicioso then you would use estar that taste provoked that feeling in you if a restaurant is usually good let's say or a dish you can't really you can't really make it wrong es bueno es delicioso that's how it usually is but if you're in a cooking show and you just made something and you need to pretend that it's dynamite you taste it and you say wow está bueno estar guapo ser guapo if usually your father is around the house in sweats and hasn't shaved for days and he decides to shave because he needs to put on a tuxedo for a special event and he actually gets a haircut then you look at him and you say wow estás guapo someone's had a transformation but if you look dashing beautiful all the time then people will say eres guapo or eres guapa to you estar listo ser listo estar listo means to be ready yo estoy listo para la fiesta i'm ready for the party ser listo means something completely different it means to be intelligent to be quick thinking to be really sharp so if you come back if you clap back and you know how to give some pretty sick burns somebody might say eres una persona lista or if you just always get a's 
in all your classes, eres una persona lista. Estar rico, ser rico. Estar rico is to be delicious. So you have some paella. La paella está rica. It's very much like saying, la paella está buena. La paella está deliciosa. We are talking about food. Rico means rich, usually in English, but it doesn't mean rich as in when we're talking about cake in English, for example, a gooey, chocolatey cake. You say, wow, the cake is rich. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with a fatty content or very sugary content. Rico simply means delicious in this case. Ser rico means to be rich as in to have lots of money, like Uncle Scrooge. Bueno amigos, muchas gracias and thank you for joining me in another episode of The Spanish Doctor. Tell me how you are, where you are, what you do down below in the comments. Suscríbete, échame un me gusta y nos vemos. Adiós. <laughs>